Imagine a plane so massive it could house a restaurant in its wings. A behemoth designed to carry 120 passengers in luxury, drop 112 paratroopers into battle, or unleash nearly 10 tons of bombs. This was the Kalinin K-7, a Soviet dream from 1933 that pushed the limits of what an airplane could be, and paid a tragic price for its ambition. Buckle up, because today we're diving into the rise and fall of this forgotten giant, a story of genius, daring, and disaster that still haunts aviation history. Let's set the stage. It's 1931, and the Soviet Union is a nation on fire with ambition. Joseph Stalin's five-year plan is transforming the country, building factories, forging steel, and chasing dreams of technological supremacy. The USSR wants to prove it can rival the West, and aviation is the ultimate stage. Massive planes are the obsession of the day, symbols of power, progress, and pride. The Tupolev AN-T-20, dubbed the Maxim Gorky, is already turning heads with its 63-meter wingspan. But in the city of Kharkiv, Ukraine, a lesser-known visionary is about to take things even further. Enter Konstantin Kalinin, a man whose life reads like an adventure novel. He's a World War I pilot who dodged bullets in the skies, fought in the Russian Civil War, and trained a generation of Soviet flyers. Now, as head of the Kharkiv Design Bureau, he's got a wild idea, a single aircraft that can do it all, carry passengers in style, transport troops, and dominate the battlefield. It's called the K-7, and it's unlike anything the world has ever seen. By 1931, Kalinin's team is hard at work, sketching a machine that defies imagination. Picture this, a wingspan of 53 meters, wider than a football field. Wings so thick, 2.3 meters at their deepest, that they can house entire rooms. A twin boom design, with two long tails stretching back from the wings, giving it a bizarre, almost alien silhouette. This isn't just a plane, it's a flying fortress. The K-7 is built to carry 120 passengers with sleeping quarters, a radio room, a smoking lounge, even a small restaurant, like a luxury liner of the skies. For the military, it can haul 112 paratroopers or 7,000 kilograms of cargo. And as a bomber, eight 20 mm autocannons, eight machine guns, and up to 9,600 kilograms of bombs. It's a Swiss army knife with wings. What makes this even more incredible is the material. The K-7 is built with Soviet-made chromolybdenum steel, light, strong, and a point of national pride. No foreign imports here, this is a purely Soviet creation. The engines? 6 Mikulin AM-34 FV-12s, each pumping out 750 horsepower, mounted on the wing's leading edge. Later, they'd add two more, bringing the total to eight, because this beast is heavy, 24,400 kilograms empty, 46,500 at takeoff. It's 28 meters long, 12.4 meters high, with a crew of 11 to keep it flying. The Soviets are betting big on Kalinin's vision, and by 1933, after two years of sweat and steel, the K-7 is ready to take flight. August 11, 1933. The sun rises over Kharkiv, and the K-7 stands gleaming on the tarmac, its massive wings casting shadows like a sleeping giant. Test pilot M.M. Gromov, a legend in Soviet aviation, climbs aboard with his crew. The engines roar to life, their deep hum vibrating through the airframe. The K-7 lumbers forward, gathers speed, and, against all odds, lifts off. For a brief moment, it's a triumph. The Soviet Union has built one of the largest planes in history, and it's flying. But something's wrong. As the K-7 climbs, the crew feels it, a violent shudder, a bone-rattling vibration that seems to come from everywhere and nowhere. The airframe is resonating with the engines, like a tuning fork struck too hard. It's a problem engineers barely understand in 1933, a deadly dance of physics called aerodynamic flutter. The first flight is cut short, landing after just a few minutes. Kalinin and his team are shaken but undeterred. They tweak the design, shortening and strengthening the tail booms, hoping to tame the beast. Over the next few months, the K-7 flies six more times, each test a battle against those relentless vibrations. November 21, 1933. The K-7 takes off for its seventh test flight, carrying 20 crew members, including engineers and gunners testing its military setup. The engines roar, the wings flex, and for a moment, it seems like progress. Then, disaster. High above Kharkiv, 
one of the tail booms begins to shake violently. The flutter returns, worse than ever, and the structure can't take it. A sickening crack echoes through the airframe as the tail boom fails. The elevator jams, and the K-7 pitches into an uncontrollable dive. It slams into the ground, a fireball of twisted steel and shattered dreams. Fourteen crew members perish, along with one person on the ground. The Soviet aviation community is stunned. The K-7, their great hope, is a wreck. Whispers of sabotage begin almost immediately. The OGPU, Stalin's secret police, swoops in to investigate. Some point fingers at rival designers, like Andrei Tupolev, whose own giant planes compete for funding. Others wonder if political enemies targeted Kalinin's project. But the truth is simpler, and sadder. The K-7 was a victim of its own ambition. Aerodynamic flutter, poorly understood in the 1930s, overwhelmed the airframe. The tail boom's failure was a design flaw, not a conspiracy. Still, in Stalin's paranoid Soviet Union, rumors of betrayal linger, casting a shadow over the tragedy. The crash is a death blow for the K-7. The Soviet government had ordered two more prototypes, but by 1935, the project is scrapped. The vibrations were never fully resolved, and the cost of fixing them is too high. Besides, aviation is moving fast, newer, faster monoplanes are making the K-7's lumbering design obsolete. The dream of a multi-role giant fades, replaced by more practical machines. But the story doesn't end with the K-7's wreckage. Its creator, Konstantin Kalinin, faces a fate even more heartbreaking. Kalinin is no stranger to success. Before the K-7, he designed the K-4 and K-5, reliable planes that carried passengers and mail across the Soviet Union. But the K-7's failure puts him under scrutiny. In 1938, the Stalinist purges sweep through the country, targeting anyone deemed disloyal. Kalinin, a brilliant engineer with no proven ties to espionage, is arrested as an enemy of the state. He's executed that same year, his contributions to Soviet aviation erased by political paranoia. Whether the K-7's failure played a role in his arrest is unclear, but it's likely his prominence made him a target in a regime that devoured its own. Kalinin's death is a loss not just for his family but for Soviet aviation. His vision of a multi-role aircraft was bold, even visionary, and his use of domestic steel set a precedent for self-reliance. The K-7, though a failure, taught engineers about the dangers of flutter and resonance, lessons that would shape safer planes in the years to come. So why does the Kalinin K-7 still capture our imagination? It's a story of human ambition pushing against the limits of technology, and paying the ultimate price. Its 53-meter wingspan dwarfed most planes of its day, rivaling even the Tupolev An-20 63 meters and outclassing the American Martin B-10's modest 21.5 meters. Its wing area, 454 square meters, was larger than a modern B-52's 370. It was a giant in every sense, a testament to what the Soviet Union could dream up, even if it couldn't make it work. Today, the K-7 lives on in the hearts of aviation geeks. On forums like Reddit's Weird Wings, enthusiasts debate its quirks and share 3D renderings. Though, fair warning, many images online are artistic guesses, not real photos. Modelers build RC versions, trying to capture its strange beauty. The K-7's failure taught the world about aerodynamic flutter, saving countless lives in future designs. It's a reminder that even failed experiments can change history. The Kalinin K-7 was more than a plane, it was a symbol of a nation's hunger for greatness, a dream forged in steel and ambition. It flew just seven times, but each flight was a leap into the unknown. Its crash was a tragedy, its creator's death a crime, but its legacy endures. The K-7 showed what happens when humans reach too far, too fast, and how those reaches, even when they fail, push us forward. So, what do you think? Could the K-7 have soared with modern tech, or was it doomed from the start? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and let us know which wild plane you want us to cover next. If you love this dive into aviation's strangest corners, hit that subscribe button and share this story with your fellow avgeeks. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies. This is the story of the Kalinin K-7, a giant that fell, but never faded.